Hi there, and uh, welcome to this episode of uh, Totally Unscripted. Um, I'm delighted um, that we've been able, uh, via uh, VPNs, proxies, <laughs> uh, and various means, to be joined by uh, Jordan Ray, uh, who's based in Beijing in China, and has done a ton of stuff within the education uh, field. and. Uh, for us on this on the show, he's 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 doing a lot of that with Google Apps Script. So hi Jordan, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So um, today we're gonna uh, let Jordan show some of the projects he's gonna uh, be or has has been working on. So today, we'll, uh, Jordan's going to talk about teachers as maker. Makers coding with um, Google Apps Script, but before we do that, we thought we'd just go through some uh, news and community things, just to, to flag some bits and pieces that have uh, come out. Um, so, um, in terms of news, I think uh, there's been a couple of things. So, uh, this was kind of dropped on everyone. Uh, everyone I've, I've spoken to has heard nothing of about this until. Um, it, it's come out. So I don't know if, if people are familiar with Google Data Studio. It's a, a very simple web-based visualization. Uh, it, you can tool, you can make dashboards. Um, there was a set of data inputs that you could use as part of Google Data Studio, but um, it was announced, I think, a couple of days ago uh, that there's now uh, these community connectors. And I think the interesting thing for the App Script community is that these community connectors are uh, created with Google App Script. So I think it's um, more evidence of uh, Google App Script proliferating kind of the, the Google infrastructure. So I think it, you know, in terms of long term sustainability of um, Google App Script, I think it's a, a, a very positive thing. So what the community connector does is basically allow you to create um, data connections with any any data source, so any data source that you can uh, get access to or generate with um, Google Apps Script, you can plug that into to Data Studio. Bruce, I, I know you're quite interested in uh, data visualization. Is this something you've had a chance to play with, or is there any immediate ideas that uh, come to mind with you? Uh, one of the, th the one of the uh, things that I noticed was that the uh, just come back from the GDD conference in Poland. Um, and there was a massive interest in data studio from people that were coming by the uh, office hours, which was the place that people could come and ask about what's going on in Apps Script. Um, and what it was really about was to do with uh, being able to do reporting more effectively than you can do in, in Apps Script because the uh, you know with sheets and stuff it's not not, not that great. So um, I think we'll see a a, a, a lot more um, take up of that now that it's become a lot easier. So I think it's a great. Great development, and there was a uh, quite a big interest at GDD in it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I know Real has um, Real Nutterman. He's had a quick play with it, and uh, I, I can see Jacobs. I think asking about the ver verification side of the community connector. Uh, so Real has said that there is a, a different authentic, and he, he said it it's nice. Um, so um, I think. As part of this, the the app verification uh, issue that or feature that we have now is isn't a problem. I don't know if you you know anything different. Yeah, yeah. What 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 I'll do with it, in fact, is I'll I'll do a, probably do a little video this month and and put it out there so people can get started with it. It's easy to get started with. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Real was at the GDD summit as well, and he he actually showed a few things with it. That was pretty good. Excellent. Jordan, I don't know if data visualization is, is that something that interests you or um oh, yeah, a little bit, absolutely. I I, I work with spreadsheets all the time. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm uh, with D three was one of the um yeah. uh, modules in a free code camp that it was when I went through that course. Uh, I think there's a lot of D three fans out there. So um uh so just uh, some other things that have kind of popped up in AppScript. So uh, the new document add-ons list. So um, uh, this is something that uh, remain uh, 
picked up in the flag with the community. So basically it lets people, other editors in the document to see and easily enable um, add-ons that are being used in the document. So they might have not uh, originally activated those, but they can see see them listed. So um, that seems to be a nice development uh, in terms of you know enabling add-on developers to to grow uh, their their user base. Um, so a nice nice little feature to come out there. Um, something that Steve Webster picked up is uh, that the uh, prediction API. I think this is uh, a machine learning uh, set of recipes that you can uh, you can access via an API. Uh, that's deprecated, so that won't be available now after um, uh, April next year. Um, I, I wasn't. I haven't done any work with the prediction API. I don't know, Bruce, if you you looked at yeah, it. Yeah, I've used it. So what it is, it's a kind of a, as you say, the machine language, and and the idea is that you um, train it to know that uh, these values go together, um, and therefore it's able to predict what an answer will be um, given and some inputs. So in fact, it's in some ways you could say it was a precursor to TensorFlow, you know, because it's really, mm -hmm. and really uh, one of the big things about Google right now is all about the AI. So you'll find that the prediction API is going away, but you'll be able to use much more powerful APIs um, to replace that and do much cooler things. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing lots more of that. So it's not really a surprise it's going away. Um, it yeah. just means that you've got to learn how to do um, some new but cooler things. Yeah, and the, uh, the link will share the slide so you can get all these links, uh, the documentation there. Is is basically directing people to what you need to to switch to on that. Um, so that was kind of what what's come out from kind of the official Google uh, channels. But there has been quite some a number of interesting community things that um, we thought we'd just spotlight. So uh, the first one uh, from Kanchi is a, a OneDrive library. I think Bruce, you've you've played around with OneDrive authentication before yeah so so um this was about oh, quite a while ago now maybe about a year ago um i'm i made some some scripts that allowed you to um take a f let's say a sheet on google drive and and transform it and copy it to onedrive so it's just a there's yeah. an OAuth library component and then there's using the drive api um as well so this is this is kind of similar yeah, so uh, this library will let you make calls. I know quite a few education institutions actually run uh, Office 365 in parallel with um, um, uh, G Suite, so it might be something that interests them. Um, certainly, it's something that um, uh, we've, we've just got in Scotland. So, um, yeah, absolutely, especially in China here, where Office 365 is. Uh, seems to be kind of leading the, the pack. Mm. It, it, it is, so Microsoft being more favored in China than, than Google? Well, uh, everyone loves Google. I think the, the services provided by Google are, are superior. Um, however, the school the schools tend to run into these problems where at school, you can use Google Apps and Google Docs, Google Sheets, stuff like that, because the school might be running through a, a VPN or proxy. But then when students go home for the night, they might not have the same services set up at home. Uh, so those the collaboration is great to use in the classroom with, with those tools. But um, in terms of sending stuff home, you got to rely on Office 365. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting. Uh, I really haven't used uh, the Office 365 suite of tools very much. Yeah. Really until moving here. Okay, that's interesting. That's about a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so OneDrive library is there for you. Um, so this was um, Eric Corlida is at, He's a Google developer, so it's nice to. I, I'm not sure if he's still on the Google Apps Group development relations team. Um, but uh, he, he still contributes bits and pieces. So um, he, he flagged a, 
uh, object spreadsheet mapping library. Um, so um, what this does is it makes it easy to um, you know have a, a table of data and just query it. So you, you know you can pull off things based on a column value or uh, you know a row. So there've been various ones of these. I think Bruce, you highlighted a couple of um, ways that you can objectify um, Google Sheets in the past. Have you had a, a chance to look at this one? And no, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't looked at that one yet. So, no. Um, it, the codes on GitHub uh, is quite well documented as well. So there's a, a number of examples there. Um, so uh, uh, I think Eric's right. It, it, it looks quite nice. Worth worth a play if you get a chance at some point. Um, so uh, next one is. Um, uh, Jonathan Broughton, who has been contributing to Google Apps Script for a number of years, um, he's um, uh, he's following you, Bruce. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's wanting to uh, uh, distribute more of what what he's doing. So these are um, I haven't had a chance to look through these yet, but um, he's he's published a, a repo uh, custom functions. So um, I think these are uh, sheet functions rather than uh, at script functions, um, but uh, Bruce, did did you get a chance to look at this? I know you've been busy for the last week. Out. No, I haven't. I haven't got round to that yet. Yeah. I only saw, only saw it this morning, actually. Yeah, but I will. I will do. Uh, so thanks for that, Jonathan. And something related to that, um, just to flag. Um, Andrew Roberts was interested if there was any sort of kind of Slack slash another uh, kind of channel that could be used for uh, chat through. Um, I think there have been a couple of attempts at this, and they haven't, all of them haven't really got that far. So I'm aware of a, a Slack Google Apps Script channel. Um, Jonathan Highlight. There's a, a Gitter one as well, um, but uh, there hasn't been much activity on that. Um, I, I, for me, it, it uh, uh, I think Andrew's very. I can see him in the YouTube chat. He's very keen for people to to get into the the, the Gitter community. Uh, it, I have to say, in my own personal kind of development, I, uh, I I'm quite happy with the the Google Plus environment. Uh, so far for you know posting questions but I, I don't know Jordan do you, do you use channels like slack do you do you think there should be more for Google Apps script in that area um I haven't really uh, I, I I haven't really stack overflow is the majority mm -hmm. of the um, Google Apps scripting you know questions and talk that I uh, yeah. uh, that I that I get to take part in. How about how you? But you Bruce? used Gitter a little bit, right? Yeah. So so in fact, I I joined uh, Andrew's Slack channel. I think yesterday just to have a look at it, see what was going on there. But but personally, I mean, obviously you've obviously got Hangouts as well, which is mm -hmm. you know, fairly immediate. Um, from my perspective, I want to control. Um, the amount of time I spend dealing with stuff, and you know, obviously, if you if you post a lot of stuff in there and you got people contacting you all the time, um, including wanting to have a hangout with you right right mm -hmm. right there and then, and people you never heard of. So, um, like you, I prefer to space out a little bit and yeah. alloc allocate a certain amount of time to deal with it, rather than it being as asynch as asynchronous, if you like, mm -hmm. as these chat things can be but you know they, they do have use if you've started the conversation with yeah. someone I think I think it's good to have a place with which you can do it um, a lot better than the you know post and wait approach yeah. that you have in Google Plus and everything but um, I don't like the idea of initiating um, asynchronous conversations on, on on things like that because you know people, I mean apart from the intrusiveness of, of it it actually disappoints people if you can't mm. that Participation. Yeah. So I'm, t I'm in kind of two minds about it, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Um, 
Sorry, Jordan, you were going to say something. I would, I would totally agree with the, the need to kind of centralize mm -hmm. conversations among places. Super important for me, where especially it's not this isn't my primary, you know, function in the day is is coding. So when I when I want to look when I'm doing stuff with App Script, I want I kind of need it to be in one place. I, uh, mm -hmm. I can't look all over the creation for it. I think the, these things need a, a a critical mass as well, so it can be quite quite hard initially. But um, I think we've got some enthusiastic people in the community maybe who oh, um uh, and we, we do have very enthusiastic people in the community maybe um something will come of that um so the last thing bruce was um uh you've you've got a uh, uh to your portfolio you've got another uh uh add-on that's um uh, available in the store and you've got uh, a couple of links there do you want to talk a bit to that as well yeah, so the the I mean, obviously there's there's lots of add-ons out there, but I wanted to make the point that uh, open sourcing add-ons is a pretty good thing to do um, because it gives it gives people who don't know how to get started with complex add-ons somewhere to go, um, you know, because they can install it, see what it looks like, see what it does, and then say, well, I wonder how you do that, and then go 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 and get the the open source of it. Um, and I guess the other part of it is that this one uses the slides API, which is a fairly complicated one. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get started with it, it's a little bit off putting. So again, it gives you a kickstart on this. You know, a lot of people publish publish add ons, but don't open source the uh, the code. I, I tend to open source all of mine. I, I, th I think, you know, people are concerned that maybe there's a monetization opportunity that they're missing mm -hmm. by not open sourcing it but quite frankly it's quite difficult to make any money off the uh, um, the add-on market in any case so you know it's you got to think about whether or not you want to to do something for the for the buzz of doing it or whether you think you might yeah. want to be able to make some money out of it so I would highly recommend people who are writing add-ons to or in fact any code that they feel should be public to make it public and everybody will benefit Today, uh, Jordan's talking about teachers and makers coding with um, Google Scripts. So over to you, Jordan. Uh, what, what, what have you got for us? So my name is Jordan Ray, um, and I am an English teacher. Um, I've been teaching for the past eight years, uh, four years in Virginia, um, then the last four years in a city called Izmir in Turkey. Uh, and now I've just moved with my wife to Beijing. Um, and she is a full-time teacher at a boarding school here, kind of just a little north of, of Beijing. Um, and I am substituting and kind of um, taking some time to kind of work on these educational projects. Um, so uh, how did I get started with coding? Really, it was about three years ago. Um, I wanted to make games. Um, oh, sorry. I'm gonna, so I'm going to talk about how I got started with coding and discovering Google Apps Script uh, and then the Google Innovator Program. Um, my goal of this talk is to uh, show just a few of the projects for education that I've uh, been lucky to have been a part of. Really, a lot of this program has just been the networking aspect of it. Um, and then connecting with people that have these great ideas. Um, I'm going to be honest and say that, um, uh, you know, I, I think I'm a pretty good teacher, but I'm not the, the greatest teacher of all time. But I just happen to learn enough JavaScript to be able to put other great teachers' ideas into, uh, into kind of these cool proofs of concept. Uh, so like I said, I'm Jordan Ray. I'm an English teacher teaching for eight years, um, and now I'm in Beijing. Um, I started learning to code because I wanted to make a game uh, for my fifth graders. We started this one-to-one -one iPad project uh, where all the kids were bringing in their own iPads, um, and you know we were kind of lacking 
content for it. You know, there's tons of stuff out there, um, but it all it doesn't always necessarily mesh with uh, you know what you want to do in the classroom or kind of um, you know how how your classroom works. So I wanted to make be able to make my own games, my own content for the classroom, uh, but turned out to be a little harder than I thought. Um, I grabbed this program called Stencil, what one of some of the kids were using, kind of a little drag and drop thing. Um, you've got the blocks, right, and then these loops and uh, conditionals, or it, it's all kind of block formatted. Um, I couldn't, I could not figure out what I was doing there. Um, so then I, I heard of this thing called Unity, and I was like, free games, that sounds really cool. Also, couldn't really figure out what I was doing. So I figured I needed to actually learn the fundamentals of a programming language. Um, you know, I, I picked up Python and PHP, uh, and those really helped me to figure out those, the, you know, loops and conditionals and, and to learn those basic principles. Um, and then I got interested in JavaScript and web development because I stumbled across uh, Free Code Camp. Um, which is like an online curriculum that um, some guys have been putting together, and now they've formed their own huge community. Um, and you know, it takes you from you know very beginning HTML, algorithm practice, jQuery, all the way up to learning Angular. And now I think their focus is with React and um, kind of creating React apps. Um, and that was super great. For me, because uh, I could build something, and then you know, it's just proofs of concept. These aren't production; it's not production quality code, I'm sure. But be able to build something that could then I could show within a couple of days. So the, just the, the turnaround and stuff. And when you're a teacher and you're constantly coming up with lesson plans and kind of redirecting your um, curriculum, that's super important. You don't have uh, six months to uh, develop a game, you know that you're you're going to use for one lesson. Um, so I found at Google Apps Script around the time. Just to, as a teacher, I love the collaborative aspect of the Google tools. You know, being able to have multiple people typing in one document or using one spreadsheet at a time. Really helpful in the classroom. Really cool to use in the classroom. And then I realized that Google Apps Script is just built on JavaScript, which is this programming language that I'm learning. So uh, that's where I that's where I really got super excited with Apps Script. Um, the first thing I built, I was like, this tool is so great. I really want to, you know, um, I hate typing in grades. I I, I just hate doing it. But it's a it's just a part of being a teacher. You gotta be, you gotta type in grades. How can I make it a little bit faster? So I created this is I think my first add-on. I created this tool with um, uh, jQuery and uh, really just so that I could type in grades more quickly. Um, and all it does is allow you to uh, you know. Select where you know which column you're putting a grade into. Um, it's got a, a grading scale for reference if you need it, but then you can just uh, uses the jQuery autocomplete, um, and then I can just type in grade super quickly, and then it just focuses automatically back up to the the right name, and it just allowed me to kind of type in grades more quickly, even if I have um, you know. Uh, a grading scale, and I don't know. This is a fun little project mm -hmm. that I had uh, to um, speed up the, the the way that I was uh, grading it. What were the main kind of technical hurdles for you to get over on that on that project? Yeah, the, the autocomplete, and I was new to jQuery, and then I think it's actually is a jQuery UI that has the autocomplete. I, I, I was starting to learn kind of the basics of JavaScript, but I just didn't, uh, not, not everything was clicking for me. But, uh, you know, it, it worked for me. I got it 
I got the thing working. Um, I, I think I published it unlisted so I could share it with some other teachers that, that I worked with at the time. And um, people, you know, people thought it was cool. And it was at that time that uh, I think I made that and, and um, was using that. And, and then I found out that there's a whole series of Google certifications that you can get for teaching. Now, like the Google Certified Educator Levels 1 and 2, those are just for kind of for using, uh, you know, the, the Google Apps in your classroom, you know, Docs. How do you, uh, how can you more effectively use Docs and Sheets, uh, you know, to plan lessons? Um, but they have a program called the Innovator Academy that actually you apply for, you have to propose a project, um, apply, and, you know, you wait a couple of months, and then you, you hear that you've been accepted or denied. And, and I thought, well, I've been doing these things with Google Apps Script. Um, I should apply for this Innovator Academy, not and have my project be building these kind of tools, using Apps Script to build tools for education um, that, uh, you know, because I'm certainly not the, the, the last person to ever have an idea, right? I mean, there's so many teachers that have great ideas, but maybe are lacking the tools to really bring those to reality. So that was my project presentation. Were there many app scripters or app script projects as part of the innovator program, or were you, you, well, you, you blazing so the what path? I found, um, there weren't really many coders uh, at the Innovator Academy. So the, the one that I went to was in Boulder, uh, Colorado, at the, the offices there, the Google offices there. Um, really, the other people there, I met a couple of people that were interested in coding. Um, I'll talk about a couple of people in a minute. Um, so, uh, there's a guy named Wesley Chun. He's like on every single one of the, like Google API tutorial, uh, videos. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, seen him. Uh, I had yeah, meeting actually, Wesley. <laughs> yeah, actually I was, I was with him two days ago. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's the, the, yeah, he's I, the, I met him there. He just did a presentation. He did a presentation for us and, uh, um, I just, it was like, uh, you know, meeting a, like, a YouTube celebrity. <laughs> like, I think, <laughs> hey, I've seen you before. Wesley's, <laughs> Wesley's really good at um, distilling, uh, you know, a, a coding idea or concept and then conveying that, I find he, he's a great kind of, if people are just starting out, he's a, a, a great avenue just to, to see what's possible, and the, he makes it look also easy as well. But I really wanted to help other people with their projects, um, and so those are. So the next couple of uh, things I'm going to talk about are are those projects. Um, I met uh, talking about guys who are coders. So Dan Sharp, uh, he had this project where he was actually doing some coding himself. Um, he was building this badging system. Uh, with Google Sheets and Google Forms. Um, and so we started talking about Apps Script, and we made a couple of YouTube videos probably nine months ago. And we had this idea together that we would use Google Forms to kind of create a, uh, like a real-time response wall. So we built this tool. It's basically just an add-on that shows uh, forms responses as live on a page. It gives you the option of, you know, just different ways of displaying, you know, student responses. And then you can just put it up on the projector and then it auto refreshes itself. So, you know, as students submit forms responses to this, um, it just appears right on the board. And it's kind of a, a fun little way to end a lesson. Um, there's one thing uh, students, especially fifth graders, I'm mostly familiar with primary, but they love seeing their name on the board in any fashion. So this is kind of, you know, uh, 
an iteration of, of what we did there. There's like a cork board version and a chalkboard version. Um, and really it's just a, it's an add-on that just uh, pipes information to a, uh, to, a de to something deployed as a web app. The next thing, I, uh, Melissa Oliver, uh, she, she contacted me after Boulder. I met her there, but she contacted me later and, and was like, Jordan, you're the guy who's interested in scripting. Um, I have an idea uh, where she wanted to build a tool for, she teaches primarily deaf students. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she loves the caption creator that's available with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like you can community source, you know, the closed captioning. Um, and have people write them. However, uh, teachers don't always want all of their student work uh, on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. If you make a video, um, you don't necessarily want to put every student video on YouTube. And she wanted a tool that was something similar to that, but worked with Google Drive. So I was experimenting with the, the, the picker tool um, and uh, Basically, just trying to replicate the, you know, the functionality of that YouTube closed captioning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where you know it just loads up the video, um, and you know as you play it, you can type, and then it pauses the video as you type, and then it adds it to the, the text. Um, Right, and so it creates this SRT. You can sometimes um, help oh, stop it there. No, uh, you know you can add timestamps as you go. Yeah. Sometimes the SRT format uh, requires that, and then you can download it as a text SRT file, or you can save it right into Google Docs and just create transcripts of videos. This is a one of those projects that uh, I thought it was. Um, really interesting, but then I also really wanted to practice, you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, I, I just, mm -hmm. I like uh, the the learning aspect of these projects also. Um, I think when you, when you start developing add-ons, um, the, the, there's, you know, so much user interfacing that needs to be done. Um, yeah. Do you, what's your kind of, flow for that? Are you just looking for existing examples of HTML markup or do you just start from scratch? What, what, how do you usually go about it? Well, so like this was, um, I used a framework called Skeleton CSS mm -hmm. um, to just kind of get the, to just create some CSS layout. Uh, and then I just kind of sketched out in a notebook kind of what I wanted to, wanted it to look like. Um, and then just created from there. I, I don't have a super professional wireframing um, <laughs> system for what I'm doing. What was uh, what was next? Uh, this library portfolio. So this was um, actually built with not with somebody that I've met in Boulder. I'm gonna just throw this into the the middle here. But the librarian at the school where I worked in Turkey, uh, she wanted a way to kind of engage students when they came into the library. Um, the library lessons were like once a week and they were kind of hectic because you've got 20, you know, middle school or primary school kids, you know, in a library and you, you want them to get books, but you kind of want to direct them at the same time. So she wanted um, like a, a quiz that was kind of like one of those, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Those BuzzFeed quizzes that you get all the time, right? Where there's like, you know, which which of the Scooby-Doo characters are you? And then you answer a bunch of questions yeah. and it tells you which character you are from Scooby-Doo. Well, so I found on CodePen somebody had a kind of similar system that I that I modified. Um, so it, so this would be where I, I got that from, CodePen. Yeah. You know, she developed the questions for it. And then she, uh, using forms, um, she just created these lists of books. And then I tied into the Goodreads API to pull book covers. Um, and then students can 
you know, select these books, and then it starts a uh, kind of a there's a reading response project for them in a folder for them on Google Drive. Um, and then you can see all of the, the little projects that you've mm -hmm. got here on Google Drive, and it, it links to them. Um, and then she she created all these templates, right? So I just coded it to take her templates randomly, one of these templates out of there, and then Destiny Quest is a um, a system that a lot of school libraries use. Uh, um, and so it kind of ties in a bunch of different uh, services um, just to make it easier for her and for the students too uh, to to keep track of um, what they're doing, build a reading list. And so that's the library portfolio. Um, that was a really that was really fun for me just to kind of use APIs that I'm not familiar with to um, you know with App Script. Then uh, an email summarizer with uh, um, Desiree Alexander, who I met in Boulder also. She wanted a, um, we get lots of emails, and then she wanted a way to kind of summarize emails the way that, you know, in Google Groups, you can choose to like have a daily summary instead of mm -hmm. constant updates. Well, she wanted a way to do that um, with, you know, other emails. And so I thought a cool way to do it would be to, to take um, uh, labels, summarize those, and then archive them, and then it sends you a document of those at the end of the day. Um, and uh, that was a, a learning experience for me with triggers and how the how the triggers work. Most recently, um, this uh, multi dropdown data validator. I built with my friend Daniel Sharp. I mentioned him earlier. Mm -hmm. um, he messaged me with this idea to create uh, those drop down data validations mm -hmm. um, that are dependent on each other. So, you know, when you select um, when you select something, it creates a drop down to the, yeah. the right, and then as you change it. Um, so, we came up with a couple of different. Uh, different ways to do that with named ranges. So uh, that was the last uh, project. Well, I think I you um, pu published quite a few videos around some of these. So I think with the um, on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I, so I like to make, because um, I don't, like I've, I've tried to start a blog at various times, but I just, I don't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier for me to kind of demonstrate what I'm doing when somebody has a question on on YouTube than um, than writing a blog post. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can see a ton of different projects. Some of a lot of them, um, or no, oh, sorry, all of them are really they're proofs of concept just to show what is capable with Google Apps Script, what you're capable of doing with Google Apps Script. Because I think a lot of a lot of teachers aren't aware um, of those things, and, and you know, I I used to hear in meetings all the time, it'd be great if it did this. Mm -hmm. uh, too bad it doesn't, and then that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> when I think really, it doesn't need to be the end of the conversation because I think there are so many things that are possible. I actually I hesitate to even say that something isn't possible um, because you know I've. Uh, I'm I'm so stubborn that I just I kind of uh, <laughs> if it's not possible in the most direct way I will I'll find an API somewhere or, or find some hacky solution to to make it work. The question I always get asked is where do you start? So what would be your I always don't have an answer to that. <laughs> what I would you? <laughs> I I can't say enough good things about Free Code Camp. Um, right. It was uh, it's laid out in a super straightforward way. It's an interactive tool. So like as you interactive in the same way that like Code Academy is or um, Code School. Um, I've, I've used both of those, but I just didn't really stick with it. Like a lot of um, you know three. We're going back three years to when I 
kind of started that. And um, a lot of the tools for learning that I found were like, okay, so, uh, okay, here's a string, and this is an integer, and this is an object. An object is the blueprints for building a house. Uh, now build uh, the next Facebook. Um, and it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know how to get from, you know, the ABCs to the, you know, uh, you know, to full on Latin, you know, like yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, so Free Code Camp was provided all of these projects along the way. And that's really what gave me the idea to, um, you know, because you, you do some stuff with jQuery and then they're like, okay, here's five project ideas. Now build them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you're building them. And then as you're doing that, then you have other ideas. Um, and, you know, so it was somewhere around there that I was like, you know what? We really like building this stopwatch is cool, but you know what I actually need is a grading tool for, for when I'm typing in grades. Can I use the st same stuff that I'm using with jQuery to build that? I wonder. And then, so then kind of connecting that knowledge and, and really free code camp, uh, pushed all of that stuff together, right? The, the whole idea of this project based learning and then providing a very straightforward curriculum for doing that um, was super great. So when you hit problems, do you, is it Stack Overflow the place you go, or do you just Google something and see if you hit yeah, Stack Overflow hit, or? I always hit, yeah, no, I always I always start with a Google search when I run into yeah. problems. Um, with, you know, with Google Apps Script, uh, the problems that I run into now um, are mostly having to do with like permissions and um, me not understanding that, that uh, various ways that that the app script code is a little bit different than it, the, it, the, the JavaScript is a little bit different. It seems that the, your kind of project based approach as well um, seems to be uh, helping you a lot in terms of you know you've got a focus in terms of what you want to solve and so you, you know you have the destination set you just got to figure out the journey yes yeah absolutely um and you know that was something i'd never really put into words until last summer and taking part in the, the that innovator academy where they talk more about um finding problems than solving them right once you've found the problem, you'll get to the that end point. Mm. You know, you just gotta keep pushing yourself forward. Um, but finding the problem is 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 more difficult. Being able to really hone in on what the problem is um, is kind of the most important part. If um, people are interested in your your projects and kind of your, your journey, where's the best place that they, they can find you and, and find stuff? Um, well, probably, uh, Twitter. Um, I'm at Ray JT at Twitter um, and uh, on Twitter. And um, you, you can find my YouTube channel at just youtube.com slash Jordan Ray. Um, and, you know, leave comments there. I have a website, jordanray.com, um, and that's got a, a contact form that I actually just recently, I just added that to my website. Um, and I used Google Apps Script to send the, the emails, and I made a little video about that. Somehow we managed to go over time again, but hopefully uh, people watching have um, found this conversation useful. Um, if nothing else, hopefully you've um, discovered, discovered some of the work that Georgian's uh, been, been doing and um, uh, discovered that uh, he seems very amenable to um, collaborating with other people. So even if you haven't got the coding skills just yet, it sounds like if you've got an idea that interests Jordan, I think um, he might just pick that up and run with it. Um, so thanks very much, Jordan, for, for taking the time and um, sharing um, some of the stuff that you've been getting up to. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I, I, I 
I appreciate the conversation.